All right, I guess that means we're going to be getting things started then. Our round one timers. It's 45 minutes and and I think five minutes over time. But yeah, everyone's already starting. So it looks like we're going to be kicking things off. We'll be getting names sorted in a little bit. But uh, yeah, I think yeah, timers are going. So it looks like the players are going to be setting up the security and getting things going. We do know there is an armor versus shine. Uh, participation packs are being sorted out as well for everyone, as you heard on the Josh thing. Wanted to let you, let you all hear what we've got. And we do have uh, DP markers, uh, thanks to Conquest Collectibles for supplying those. Hopefully the players will look over and actually put them up. I believe it is Shine Greymon on the left, and then we have Armor on the right. So we will be getting use of those DP as well as the uh, power markers. We're starting off with a Vmon promo in the back. I do see a Davis, but considering he's passed over... It says five, but the Davis was turned side... Oh, right, yeah, it doesn't get the extra memory. No, should have gotten the extra memory. So we're going to go for the Louis instead. Gains back the memory, choosing to go for some early aggression. Gonna get the Magnamon in, and it looks like we're on a Wanya Egg as well, so we're not gonna be getting huge amounts of, like, damage in early, but that's fine. Gonna get a couple of checks in, of course, yellow, and it shrink. Very, very comfy for, uh, armor. But, I don't know. It's one of those more permanent resources, and we do have the Ramen ult as well. Annoying to get in Europe, so very cool to see it whenever we see it. Do we have the four? It looks like we're going to raise the Agumon and use its main effect to turn Marcus into a Digimon. 3k, can't Digivolve. And then... Where do we go from here? The fact that we haven't turned a Geogray is kind of awkward. Obviously, you have to be careful because if you swing the Marcus and try and shrink it, you could still get Zudoed or something like that. So I want to try and play around that as best I can. There it is. There's the Zudo, as we thought. Trip and bounce. And it's going to be that one check. Hits the Vmon. It's going to live. So at least that Marcus is going to make it back to him. But it's still awkward. Because now you have to build in the back. Round one can always be a little bit difficult. They've taken at least the draw power off of the egg for now. So they, if they want to get double draws off of swing, we're going to need to see that Magna X. Both them under memory sessions as well. So we're going to be playing a pretty high, uh, pretty high, high memory kind of game. But still, a really, really risky swing early. I'm not sure I fully agree with it. I guess the idea was to try and see if they could get some tempo out of it. But they've given up a lot of tempo in response. Going to get the swing in. Just going to get the one draw off of the one year. And there's the Magnex. It is going to hit into a next Marcus, but right now that's not exactly a super loaded, a super loaded draw. Looks like we're going to see the Davis. Davis play Vmon, and then Vmon is going to search for that free type as well as a Davis, which means it can pick up the Uko and it can pick up the Vmon, but the Kumamon is going to be spun to the bottom. And looks like we're going to take the Uko. They are in the driver's seat, so it's going to give them something to Evo in the back. And if it wasn't for the memory setter, a Louis here... Actually, Louis would even keep turn, because we've got the Louis, we've got the other one, and we're just going to go for another Magna. I'm not sure I like that. Yeah, I'm not really sure I like that. I think I would have liked to see... Just because there's no Greymons here, I would have liked to see the Magna X. But then again, I guess you're still... If you're going to try and remove this body, you'd be removing it with Shrink anyway. And yeah, we're going to see the hard played level 5. So it means they did commit their only rookie in the stack. So the rookie error. 
So just to mix things up on the early tables, instead of going for table one, we went for one of the lower tables. But again, it's round one, so it really... All of them are the same. Don't look, think we're going to be playing into any vaccine aces in uh, Shine Greymon. Just explaining what the one years did. I mean, setting up a Vmon in the back is going to give you some cycle. You could also try and swing the Magna here first, see if it gets shrunk and floats, because that also allows you to maybe pick a different rookie. So we are going to see that swing in. It's going to hit the Shining Blast, and this is why I had issues. Yeah, this is why I had issues with it. So, minus eight off of the Overflow. This is why I wanted to see the Magna X, because the Magna X would keep you safe from exactly this play, and they had the memory to do it as well, so kind of just a greedy... Kind of just a greedy play. We are going to see the Magna off the float, though, which means I think we're going to be spending three memory to bounce this uh, Geo Grey back to hand, and that probably is just game right there. So, not optimal, but still more than serviceable. And we're going to see the Davis pass over the minimum amount of memory which is three and then the vmon is going to find literally anything honestly i don't think we're seeing another turn so i don't think it actually matters what we pick up here we are live on location indeed straight from the sulfur community center home of the sail sharks and the sulfur red devils and there goes the shine gray mon so yeah pretty much an admission that game one is kind of over gonna just go through the motions though i would like him to evolve into an armor ah, i mean that works actually just swinging the not armor first just guarantees that yep there it is we're gonna swing and take game one pretty comfy one there for our player on the right taking it very very early it is of course best of three here for digimon 45 minutes to get it done we didn't really see any DP increases, so we didn't have any use for the markers. But you can see them just poking out at the bottom of the screen. A very affordable way to get yourself some markers if you are trying to... Try to just make your boards a little bit easier to read. Keep track of your DP increases or your DP minus. Some might say it's a very useful mechanic. Mandatory. And we need it in the game. What did you miss? It was a pretty... Uh, quick and clean one. Um, a the game basically ended like turn two or turn three, where the uh, Marcus went sideways and the uh, Rise Greymon got bounced by a Zudo, and that was their only rookie stack. You can maybe argue round one nerves. You could maybe just argue it is just one of those I don't know matchup things. But yeah, definitely an unforced error. Considering they had the rest of the line, I don't really know why we pushed up. But people do like resolving their when did you evolvings. So the Shine Greymon player is going to be t keeping their opening hand. I'll try and get the player names from TOs between rounds, but we've got some other we've got some other just fun things for just the remainder of the day. Try and get some interviews with players and just general people around the venue as uh, things go on. And let's so be starting game two. Choosing to go first. Choosing to pay just the one cost rather than pushing over two? I mean, sure, I guess. Davis play Vmon? No, we're going to play the Louis for three. Kuko, patch one first, gain one, gain one. So the one choke is cute and all, but if you're going into armor, then you're not really gaining anything out of it. You're not going to get anything out of the Wanya, but realistically, if he passes him, yikes. Okay, that is a one choke and a half. That is crazy. Yeah, if we can get a judge um, just to... I think I know the player on the left, but yeah, if we can just get player names 
for even just future rounds in general would be helpful. Um, I don't hate that. That is that actually double clears. Oh, really well done. Really well done. Yeah, I was going to say those one chokes were not built the same, but it was actually a very well laid trap. And the Rise Greymon X. Choosing to pay full... Oh yeah, I guess they have no choice about paying the full cost, but they kind of subsidize it by bringing it back, and it looks like we're seeing a whole lot of not Vmon on this. The armor player did do their mulligan, of course, so... Yes. Yeah. So now I think the shoe is very much on the other foot, and Shine Greymon is about to clear the single stack every single turn from now on. Uh, they haven't hatched yet, but I think we're just going to give up our off turn. Surely nothing bad will happen to you at all from committing your only stack. And there it is. First mode. It's one of those interesting ones. I wonder if they really needed to get as much. Wait. Oh. The... Okay, so they were swinging. And then they just moved it to the back. They just did that in a really awkward motion. I thought they were pl playing that and then just immediately using the on play to suspend it. But no, that was them declaring an attack and then going for it. We set up pretty nicely. And then go for five, suspend, go to one. And then the only card in trash, the burst mode. Um, yeah, it looks like we're just going to scoop straight into game three. I think that is the correct decision. There's no point really, like... There's no point really showing off too many cards in the deck. Because, like, yeah, you'd be trying to fight back in. I will say, though, because they messed up their off turn... If they were on one of the blue options that bounces a single stack, um, then we theoretically could have seen them actually build back in. Not hatching was kind of troll, but you were in such a like a head position that there's no real reason to like. Well, you wouldn't normally have to worry about getting cracked back, especially a shine gray. But theoretically, like some armorless are on. Um, Full Moon Meteor Impact. Some armor lists are on Full Metal Blaze. So there was room for us to see, like, some potential shenanigans. But ended up not happening, so they were fine. So, I mean, two games done in basically 10 minutes is kind of quick. But they got it done. I mean, these are two decks that are very, very fast. You sometimes see armor playing the slow game. Because, like, the Magnet X is you set up the tower and you just kind of cook them. But this uh, this one was a... We are, we are here to fight. Which I'm always down for. Aggressive Digimon is always a very, very, very fun kind of Digimon. Especially when you both have to play on board, because then you're both liable to the same sort of problems. Also, getting to see the old Shine Greymon is always nice to see. Not the BT4 one, it's the BT... BT2? One of the OGs. It looks like the security's getting set up. I'm going to be having armor go first. This doesn't really surprise me. Like, as much as the double Uko Louie was cute, we've seen that it can get punished. So, ideally, you'd want to see the three cost Davis. But we're going to see a Zudo go to hand to an Uko and a Fire Rocket, which does reveal that, you know, Fire Rocket is in play. Go 
we're going to actually do this one for zero this time instead of going for the one choke. Go for the alternate play cost, the kind of intended intended line makes sense. It definitely did feel like that game was kind of one off of obviously not seeing the Vmons is kind of a brick as much as you do love the Ukos. But also like that, that turn one, one cost trap was fantastic. Or maybe, like, you could argue maybe an overextension, but the fact that there was no Vmons meant that, yeah, the Davis was kind of, like, Davis was suboptimal. Where do we go from here? No jamming egg, so it looks like we're going to be forced to go into the Magnum Mon for two, which does feel kind of bad. Like, obviously, the BTA Magna is kind of an ideal second kind of card. And because it lives, there's no armor texture. We're just going to see the Vmon get sent down. I don't think he's expecting to see that Vmon make it back to him. Going to take the Magna so that way it forces forces the Shine Garymon player to end on a rise. The argument X was an interesting one, like, I guess that's why we're on red base. There was a time where a lot of Shine Greymon players were on the yellow base because the extra, the extra egg was really, really useful, but ends up not doing it. Yeah, armor is kind of like, it's one of those weird ones where it's like halfway between doing what it wants to do. It can still obviously work, which is why it's seen an uptick in placements. Well, not even necessarily placements. It's seen an uptick in usage. And of course, the starter deck Magnemon is just a heinous criminal. Definitely helps the power level keep up. But it just, it just feels like right now, Shine Greymon is in the driver's seat, as I kind of alluded to at the start. Uh, yellow is a color that does traditionally do well into armors because that DP minus does persist through armor purge. So if you do manage to purge the body down, they still do get cooked by it. Gray is going to get the Tamer played down and then the Shrink. So we get the draw first. Are we going to play a Tamer? Does not look like we have a. Yeah, it does not look like we have the Tamer. And then it's minus three. Is the Shine Greymon from CT12 gets the clear. We'll actually take a look at the Rise Grey X because that was what obviously swung things enough to get to get enough. Apologies. clarifying what the inherits are because now obviously any rookie that makes it to board does get in a lot of trouble right now at the very least there's no way for them to suspend the 
there's no way for them to suspend the Marcus. But the problem is that this is just asking to get Shine Grim on burst moded. I'm going to go into the Magna to try and strip out two sources. So that should at least give him a little bit more sustainability. Obviously, it is still plus. Uh, it's still just a 7k body. But still, some decent value to lock things out. This is just really, really hard to make its way back into. Actually evolving the rookie this time in the back, so we are set up quite nicely. I mean, I'm assuming if we see the Shine Grey one, yep, there it is. Burst straight back to hand. And then that's going to be minus 12, so it really didn't matter. I don't think we have enough armors in trash for a BTA Magnemon to even live that. So I, it would either be that, or you'd want the... Maybe the BT-13 one, so that way when you get shrunk, you still float. And then because of the timings, you would miss out on the... Ag well, I mean, the Greymon's gone, but if it was still in stack, then you'd miss out on the pop. So you'd actually be able to get, a, get away with it of DP minus timings. I've got a swing, which is going to burst through and shrink off the Magna. So I get to burn the Louis, and then it's minus, minus 12. Oh, we're going for the Zudo? And bounce the Tamer. I mean, you still get your when attackings first, but do we... Do we... Does the burst mode not just cook it here? When did you evolving? Oh, no, it's a 12k Digimon. Then it gets the minus three. Still get the burn, obviously, because of 10 player priority, but you're asking to just get shot. And get shot, he does. That's going to be the Shining Blast. Plays out the Marcus. And all in all, that is enough to gain back the memory plus the overflow. So we're at two now. So it was play for five, which would put them to three. Overflow and then gain. We are going to swing at security at 15k. That is said, though, thanks to the Zudo, this means the Shine Greymon will probably get bounced back to hand if we're on... Uh, if we're on the 17, which we do see, so. That does make things a little bit more awkward now for the Shine Greymon player. Looks like I'm going to see the Agamon just to pass turn, get an extra body on the board. I don't hate this. Gives you a little bit more search power in case he's missing another five. Not that we're actually going to hit one. Up. I wouldn't hate some defensive play here. There's been no five revealed, so you wouldn't feel super bad about trying to low pass and get rid of the Shine Greymon. Like Davis play Vmon here for three and then go for some sort of Shine would be good, but also if the Magnamon BT-8 is big enough, then you could try and swing over the Shine Greymon itself to just completely clear that. And then you would have to try and play around the rest of it, which would be kind of awkward. We're checking trash now, so I think we're double checking to see how big a BT-8 would be. But... Doesn't look like we're happy with it. If it was next turn and that stack was out, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually hate seeing like Death X. But right now, I think it's just a bit too expensive. He needed to develop a blocker first, which is super important. So I think you just set, you either go into the Magnet X or you Davis play Vmon to try and go wide. Shine Greymon is one of those decks that is quite gifted in that its shrink is um, 
split into tiny little DP minus increments. So you can actually still target a wide board if you have enough. Yeah, so this is going to pass 10. I'm not going to be seeing a zero cost Davis, but we are going to be seeing a BT13 Magnamon go to hand. There is 19 minutes left on the round. I think we're about 20 seconds out as far as the time is concerned, but that's fine. Some players have already finished their round ones. A lot of people's first regionals as well. Hopefully some of you get to make it to stream and get some VOD review in. It's always a very useful thing to have. And the useful thing to have, the Geo Greymon out of security is a very useful thing to have. They did get that plus one memory off of the Geo Grey pushing out things. They did have a tamer and uh, as the NA commentators called it, Cheetah Marcus hits the field. The BT12 one. Obviously, it's, we're going to be missing that start of main, so it's not going to be... It's not going to be turning into a Digimon without the help of an Argumon or anything like that. But... What is probably slightly more criminal is that the Rise X here might be enough. It's not an ideal one, but it's... When did you evolving? Well, there's no X antibody in it and there's no Rise, so maybe we wouldn't actually get the Shrink at all. And I don't think there's actually even a Tamer to use. Alright, we're going to see that first swing. Are we playing into Zudo again? We're going to just see the block. I guess he needed the draw here, but you put yourself in a really awkward position. Obviously, he had to block first rather than Zudo. If he even has a Zudo. But... A lot of pieces of the stack that have gone missing, and it leaves you single stack now, so you are open to options. It does feel like this armor player, though, is playing super low to the ground with aggressive like fire rockets. And we haven't even seen texture, but just like the Uko Louis package, you recovered, then shuffled the wrong way around, so it's shuffle, then recover. I see. we go. You go in the back. I saw, a, I saw a little fist bump there. It wasn't uh, wasn't shown on camera, but yeah, we saw we saw a little fist pump from the player there. So there comes the strip and bounce. Being a two color deck, you are always at the mercy of it. And we drew into the heavens, so we're fine anyway. Going to swing in one. Hits the shining blast and shining blast. This card has come up a lot. But it is going to make it so if this Magnamos swings in and dies. If it swings in and hits something. Uh, so we're minus, which means it's going to purge down and then it's going to kill the Vmon. We're going to draw one as well from the one year before having that thing get deleted. I feel like you don't even have to develop Mag X here. You play Louis, game back one with the hatch and game back one from going sideways. Get your check in now, get your draw power. See if you can draw into a Vmon. You know you're not going to be hitting X Antibody in a Shine Greymon list. They really don't run it. And this puts him now on answer the board or die, which is, I think, why we saw that little that cheeky little fist bump. I think you just play a Vmon, right? You just go wide enough. Obviously, Shining Blast clears both, but that's only if, Shining, if you have Shining Blast in hand as well as a Tamer. And you can't do both. So we're just going to use Davis to play a Vimon. Get the maximum out of his memory. And then a little Ramen Muncher is going to pick up a Davis and a free type. So double hit off of the search. Uri to the bottom. And this is looking like it should be not just game one, but game three as well. Really, really solid stuff. But a nice little back and forth. You got to see how they both try to control the board. And this is why this kind of matchup is interesting. 
especially if it's played this way. There are a lot of times where you'll just see Shine push up and OTK, which is, you know, usually the better way to play it. But um, when they have to play on board, this is where you actually get opened up to having this back and forth, the neutral game, the mid range, really, however you want to call it. And that is 14 minutes left on the round as well. Although I don't think we'll be using all 14. I think we'll be finishing ours off nice and quick. All right. One security left. Just keeping... Uh, they have done that in the wrong order. They have declared them in the wrong order, but it does not matter. I don't know why they declared this to their turns, but either way, we are going to have them push out and they are going to close it out for a 2-1 win. Armor taking round one. Yeah, that was uh, that's a tough one. Shine, it felt like they were a little bit slow to start, but at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do with what you've got. We've got around about 13 minutes as players will be locking in their scores. We're getting player names for future ones, but compared to the last the last regional start, this one pretty seamless, pretty comfy. Got a couple of judge calls on some of the top tables, but it seems like people are slowly getting through their rounds. We'll try and get some interviews going on later as well with um some of the gang talking to staff, talking to players that get pick up wins. A little bit of content here and there. Try and do what we can. So that way we're not just cutting to BRBs. So you're just going to have to... Yeah, <laughs> having to listen to me waffle for 13 minutes of ramp. Yeah, a couple of misplays. So we did see like the shuffle and recovery as well as the declaring start of main randomly at the, the, the end of... Well, the beginning of the turn which is weird because they didn't do that for the rest of the game so that was probably just like a eyes on the prize so focused on picking up the win that you some just miss sequence which happens to the best of us nothing malicious just a little bit strange compared to what we're used to seeing i'm a little bit blurry my camera has decided to focus on the background instead of me but yeah good start to the regional and we'll, we'll bounce we'll bounce around especially early whilst we're there are less people available or that we'll we'll probably bounce through it to a couple of breaks try and find who's willing to get interviewed later see how the rounds are doing there's like a bunch of people from i mean if you're from the youtube you know me you know half of our local scene at this point i think there's 26 of us if we uh also claim like the bolton and jester guys like i think there's like 26 of people that i know that are there a whole range of decks you up? Let's go. All right, Hunters. Still undefeated. Still undefeated. So we've got Hunters in the building. we got Mirage. We've just seen Armor shine. Ah, oh, there's a Gabu Bond running around. Someone did ask if uh, the UK's best Alphamon, the West's best Alphamon is in the building. He's in the building. Alphamon's not with him. But boy, oh boy, can I tell you that Yuji... Yuji... Kudo, Yuji Musha is here and his name is Madishida because they are the same card. Um, yeah, he's doing diabolical things with that deck today. I've already seen that. He, I've already seen that he's, he won his first game. He walked by in like 15 minutes. We're 15 minutes and uh, it's like someone got hit by uh, a BT6 flashbang, and it happens to the best of us. 